Hi everyone, Donut here. Welcome to Volume 2 of The Adventures of Kyle Rittenhouse. Last night, about an hour after I released Volume 1 of The Adventures of Kyle Rittenhouse, my video was taken down by YouTube. It was just cruising along at about 120,000 views after an hour, and YouTube found it to be ineligible and removed it altogether from my channel. I appealed it, tweeted YouTube, and was like, hey, what the heck, man? And then they put it up like 10 minutes later behind two age restrictions. I'm glad it's up. They just kind of killed it there for a little bit. But don't worry, if you come to my stream tonight, I'm not going to be raging about YouTube. We're going to talk about the criminal complaint that was filed against Kyle Rittenhouse today. And we're also going to correct some of the things that I said yesterday because I will always admit when I am wrong. I will never double down on bullshit like a lot of people you see on Twitter. First up, I have no idea why I said Jacob Blake died. I guess I've been watching way too much CNN. He's actually still alive, and he still has an active warrant against him for sexually assaulting someone, and they're thinking that he is going to be paralyzed from the waist down. The latest thing I've seen about him is police officers did have him handcuffed to the bed because he still has an active warrant for doing something really bad. Now check out what was filed yesterday. This is the state of Wisconsin criminal complaint against Kyle Rittenhouse. He has been charged with six counts. First degree reckless homicide, first degree recklessly endangering safety, attempt first degree intentional homicide, first degree recklessly endangering safety, and possession of a dangerous weapon by a person under 18. Let's go over these a little bit, and I'm going to explain some things to you that I've learned since my video last night. The first count, which is first degree reckless homicide, states that Kyle did recklessly cause the death of Joseph Rosenbaum. Rosenbaum was the first guy that Kyle shot in the video last night. This is the guy that threw something at him, ran at him, lunged at him, and then ended up getting shot. There's been a screenshot circulating the internet of the Wisconsin Department of Corrections showing that he was a registered sex offender, and I couldn't find it last night. There's a reason for that. It's been taken down because he died, but the Arizona Department of Corrections still has it up. Joseph D. Rosenbaum. In 2002, he was convicted of two counts of sexual conduct with a minor, and in 2014, he was convicted of interfering with a monitoring device. During his time in prison, he committed a little bit over 40 violations. I also said last night he took a bullet to the head and that's what killed him. He did take a grazing wound to the head, but it was other shots that killed him. According to Dr. Kelly of the Milwaukee Medical Examiner's Office, he had a gunshot wound to the right groin, which fractured his pelvis, a gunshot wound in the back, which perforated his right lung and liver, a gunshot wound in the left hand, a superficial gunshot wound to his lateral left thigh, and a grazed gunshot wound to the right side of his forehead. When he shoots Rosenbaum, if you'll remember last night, he ran around the back of the car and then he pulls his cell phone out and I said, well, maybe he's calling 911 because someone said call 911. He actually didn't call 911. According to reports, a detective spoke with a Dominic Black on August 26th. Dominic stated that he received a call from his friend Kyle Rittenhouse at 11.46 p.m. in which the defendant stated that he shot someone. I think my amazing mod team also found out what started the confrontation between Rosenbaum and Kyle in the first place. Twitter user Drew Hernandez tweeted a good Samaritan put out a trash can fire that rioters were about to push into police squad cars. Rioters were then triggered by it and went after the gas station in retaliation. But from what I understand, the person with the fire extinguisher was Kyle. It's hard to tell if that's Kyle in that video, but in another live stream from Facebook, you can clearly see Kyle run by the camera at the same gas station holding a fire extinguisher. Because the fire was put out, it caused this little confrontation we're about to watch. Drew Hernandez also tweeted out, here's more footage from the Kenosha last night when Kyle Rittenhouse shot rioters. Rioters were very stupidly attempting to challenge militias on rifles at a gas station before the mob left to the dealership. You can clearly see Mr. Rosenbaum leading a pack of lemmings. You could tell who Rosenbaum was because he's the one pushing and trying to fight people armed with rifles. So that spills over into the dealership and that's when Rosenbaum starts chasing Kyle. Second thing he's charged with is first degree recklessly endangering safety. This one says he recklessly endangered the safety of Richard McGinnis, who we haven't talked about yet. The third one is first degree intentional homicide. This is when he shot Anthony Huber, which is the skateboarder. 
The fourth one is attempted first degree intentional homicide. This was against Gage Grosskritz. Yesterday I talked about, I didn't know if he had his gun on him before or after he got shot. It looks like he ran up to Kyle with his gun Kyle pointed a gun at him, and then Gage put his hands up with his gun in his hand. There was some hesitation. It looked like Gage lunged for him, and that's when Kyle shot him and blew his bicep off. There's a lot of people on the internet saying, well, Kyle was defending himself. The dude had a gun, and he was getting his ass kicked by an angry crowd. In these two pictures right here, you can see that he did have his gun out and in his hand when he ran up to Kyle. The fifth count was first degree recklessly endangering safety. This one says they recklessly endanger the safety of an unknown male. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say it was probably the guy that jumped on him, he shot at and missed, who ran off. And the sixth charge that we talked about, possession of a dangerous weapon by a person under 18, because he was 17. Here's the person we were talking about earlier, which is Richard McGinnis. He was behind Rosenbaum when Rosenbaum was running at Kyle. McGinnis stated that Kyle moved from the middle of Sheridan Road to the sidewalk, and that's when he saw... Rosenbaum initially tried to engage the defendant. McGinnis stated that as the defendant was walking, Rosenbaum was trying to get closer to the defendant. When Rosenbaum advanced, the defendant did a juke move and started running. McGinnis stated that there were other people that were moving very quickly. McGinnis stated that they were moving towards the defendant. McGinnis said that according to what he saw, the defendant was trying to evade these individuals. So what McGinnis, our new character to the story, is telling us is that there was a crowd going after Kyle with Rosenbaum in the lead. McGinnis described the point where the defendant had reached the car. McGinnis described that the defendant had the gun in a low ready position, meaning that he had the gun raised and pointed downward. The butt of the gun would have been at the angle downwards from the shoulder. McGinnis stated that the defendant brought the gun up. McGinnis stated that he stepped back and he thinks the defendant fired three rounds in rapid succession. McGinnis said when the first round went off, he thought it hit the pavement. McGinnis felt something on his leg, and his first thought was wondering whether he had gotten shot. McGinnis was behind and slightly to the right of Rosenbaum in the line of fire when the defendant shot. So since he was in the line of fire, that's where that recklessly endangering charge comes from against Kyle. McGinnis stated that the first round went into the ground, and then the second shot went off. The defendant actually had the gun aimed at Rosenbaum. McGinnis stated he did not hear the two exchange any words. McGinnis stated that the unarmed guy, Rosenbaum, was trying to get the defendant's gun. McGinnis demonstrated by extending both of his hands in a quick grabbing motion and did that as a visual on how Rosenbaum tried to reach for the defendant's gun. Detective Caprice indicated that he asked McGinnis if Rosenbaum had his hands on the gun when the defendant shot. McGinnis said that he definitely made a motion that he was trying to grab the barrel of the gun. McGinnis stated that right as they came together, the defendant fired. The third video that your complainant reviewed showed the defendant running northbound on Sheridan Road after he shot Rosenbaum. A group of several people began running northbound on Sheridan Road behind the defendant. A person can be heard yelling what sounds like, beat him up. Your complainant reviewed a fourth video that showed a different angle of the defendant running northbound. In this video, a person can be heard yelling, get him, get the dude. The defendant continues to run northbound. On the video, a male can be heard saying something to the effect of, what did he do? Another male can be heard responding something to the effect of, just shot someone. Then a male can be heard yelling, get his ass. The defendant then trips and falls to the ground. We saw all that in last night's video. Kyle's trying to get away from the angry crowd chasing him. That's when he falls on the ground and the next two shootings take place. The second person who was later identified as Anthony Huber approached the defendant who is still on the ground on his back. Huber had a skateboard in his right hand. When Huber reaches the defendant, it appears that he is reaching for the defendant's gun with his left hand as the skateboard makes contact with the defendant's left shoulder. Huber appears to be trying to pull the gun away from the defendant. The defendant rolls towards his side, and as Huber appears to be trying to grab the gun, the gun is pointed at Huber's body. The defendant then fires one round, which can be heard on the video. Huber staggers away, taking several steps, and collapses to the ground. The medical examiner later stated that he was shot directly in the heart. That's why he only got a few steps and then fell over. When the defendant shot Huber, Grosskreutz freezes and ducks and takes a step back. Grosskreutz puts his hands in the air. Grosskreutz then moves toward the defendant who aims his gun at Grosskreutz and shoots him, firing one shot. Grosskreutz was shot in the right arm. Grosskreutz appears to be holding a handgun in his right hand when he is shot. There's the criminal complaint filed against Kyle. I'm really intrigued to see what happens during this trial. I'll definitely keep up with it and post updates. The internet is pretty divided on this one. You got half of the people saying, well, he was just defending himself against violent rioters. And you got another half saying, well, no, that was basically a mass shooting. He just killed two people and wounded another. But hey, that's why we're here. So we can have a calm, rational discussion about this in the comments below. I'll be streaming over at twitch.tv slash donut operator as soon as this video is released. I hope to see you all there. I'm not going to rage about YouTube and other things tonight. Everyone, please have a fantastic day. Also, subscribe to my vlog channel. Whacker.